Well, uh, it's now time to introduce the ladies who will be a part of this panel discussion. Latika Pai, who is the managing partner of Tech and Roads, TIR Consulting LLP. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. Please take a seat. In a bit, I would, uh, we would introduce you over here. As managing partner at Tech and Roads Consulting LLP, she helps incubate technology companies from the US and Europe who are looking to start operations in India, either to kickstart their sales strategy or those who need back office engineering resource support. She manages India and the Middle East for Collective, the world's leader in SDN and enterprise video broadcast. She's the founder, trustee Sonder Connect. Sonder Connect, um, it's powering female founders, uh, which is a platform to invest and mentor women entrepreneurs. It consists of men and women who have achieved great heights, who are willing to give their time and money to support women entrepreneurs to scale their businesses. Well, she is a serial entrepreneur who has also worked in large technology companies in the US and UK. Her international experience includes working at Nortel, American Management Systems, and a $300 million funded startup at Relira. Her first entrepreneur uh, company was Virtual Source that was emerged with Talisma's technical support arm to form B2K Corp, which grew to 600 employees and was then sold to all sec technologies. I would request everyone to kindly be seated. Yes, definitely you can have your uh, refreshments and then you can sit along. She has raised capital successfully for her ventures both through equity and debt funding. She's the founding director of Job Skills, which is a social impact company that has partnered with the National Skills Development Corporation to skill and enhance the employability of Indians. Job Skills works closely with various state governments, NGOs, and development bodies to influence and implement various <coughs> skills development solutions. She has worked with the Indian Army of Rehabilitation of Veterans in Tibetan settlements in India and in over 10 states. Well, she has a bachelor's degree in engineering and a master's degree in software telecom and is an alum of the NSEED program for social entrepreneurship. There she is in front of us. Everybody, please put your hands together for Latika. We have two other ladies who will be joining this panel discussion. The next member is Seema Shah. She's the angel investor and business consultant. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. I take the honor to introduce you over here. I would request you to kindly take your seat. She has lived in Mumbai for nine years and an angel investor and business consultant, providing services to startups in India and across the world. Prior to moving to Mumbai, she has had 10 years of experience in banking and consulting in London and Angola. In 2009, Seema changed career and joined a brand consultancy firm in Mumbai for five years before branching out to focus on her own projects. Well, she is focused on investing in startups with a proven track record with great, uh, great teams and a clear path to grow. So, very important person along with us, Ms. Seema Shah. A very warm welcome to you, everybody. Please put your hands together once again. A very warm welcome to you. And the last lady who will be joining for this particular panel discussion is Apurva Damani. A very warm welcome to you. I hope I got it right. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. I take the honor to introduce you. She's the director of Artha India Ventures. Prior to this, she worked as a director of training at Teleram. She won a $10,000 grant from the president of Middlebury College to implement an after school program for high school children. She holds a degree in international politics and economics from Middlebury College. Very warm welcome to you, ladies. I hand the discussion over to you. Thank you. Thank you. The good news is that we have just about 20 minutes for the session. And so we're not going to deliberate too long about uh, uh, too, too many topics. Our topic is going to be very, very focused this afternoon, which is about having more number of women investors 
uh, in the ecosystem, especially here in India. So we have two uh, amazing women who have been focusing on investing into the startup ecosystem. So Apoorva, let me start with you. Uh, you had, you know, I just overheard you saying that this year you had uh, got 753 proposals and you landed up investing in only 15 of them. Where did you find time to read 753 proposals? Just to give you a quick background, Artha India Ventures has a portfolio of 55 startups that we've curated over five years. Um, we have, um, we're a sector agnostic family fund, and we receive 753 deals a year, uh, hopefully increasing year on year. Uh, you'll realize that out of 753 deals, uh, about 50% of them are, you know, asking for very high valuations. You know, the pitch deck seems to be something that's slipshod. It's, you know, put together at the last minute. Uh, maybe, you know, somebody is just, uh, you know, for the kicks of it, filled out a form. So. A lot, of, a lot of deals actually just fall off at the initial screening. Uh, we, we are very selective about the deals that we invest in. So um, as, as you mentioned, out of 753 deals that we received last year, we only invested in 15, which is 2% conversion. Um, we're very strict about the kind of deals that we invest in. So there's a very disciplined process put in place uh, both in terms of investing as well as tracking the company's growth. So uh, to give you a few examples, we are one of the earliest check writers in OYO Rooms, which we had exited from when SoftBank you know, bought us out, uh, bought out the entire group of angel investors. We are also investors in Baby Chakra, um, Exotel, Super Daily, which recently went to the Y Combinator and raised a $1.5 million round from YC. Uh, so these are a few examples of the kind of companies that you know have marked up in our portfolio and For all of the companies we have a very rigorous process uh, We you know I personally made it a point to meet uh, So out of the 55 companies I have met uh, 24 founders already and Still waiting to, to meet the remaining few as well. So to answer your question we're purposely selective because we know that this is a nascent market. It's only going to grow over startups uh, as an asset class is only going to grow uh, you know, over the next three to five years. So the aim is to have a portfolio of about 100 companies in the next three to five years. Thank you. So when we were speaking uh, to each other in the speaker's room, Apurva came up with a very interesting uh, question that I'd like to throw out to the audience. Uh, can any of you name women investors here in India, and if not in India, outside the country? Any names of, of women investors? Angel, yes, sir. Yes, please. In Thailand, excellent. In India? Who knows uh, who the president of IEN is? Co-founder president. What's her name? Padmaja Ruparal. Uh, Kalari Capital? Vani Kola, Mumbai Angels. She's she's going to speak next. Actually, do you know her name? It's on the agenda. <laughs> no, that's Seema Shah. Uh, Chandni, Chandni Jha. Um, um, there's also a lot of women in the private equity space. So there's Renuka Ramnath. You know the. Um, there's the Ganesh family as well. So there's a lot of Indian investors. Uh, Nandini Mansinka is the chairperson of Mumbai Angels. So you see a lot of examples of women leading angel networks in India, which I think is very, uh, it's highlighted very little in the media as to you know, what women have actually achieved in this ecosystem. Thank you. So Seema, you are an angel investor and uh, you've uh, you know, started about three or four years ago. What has your experience been? Have male founders taken you seriously as an as a investor? Uh, that's a very good question. Thanks. Um, so uh, I actually co-invest with my husband. So we have a 50-50 relationship in terms of how we assess deals. And and like Apurva said, we receive 
Um, over the last seven years, we've probably not looked at as many as you, Apurva, but we've looked at hundreds of deals, and some of them obviously don't pass the muster from the first email. Um, and um, when we get down to the shooting, we both play quite different roles in how we assess um, each deal. So I would say, as a man, my husband is probably a bit more of a risk taker and is probably willing to take a bit more risk. Uh, being a woman, I think I'm uh, more cautious in, in when I look at a deal. Um, I ask a lot more questions. Um, and before we even get to the first meeting, we've probably done a bit of due diligence um, on the background uh, of the, of the co-founders, on the background of the uh, team, on the background of the idea and the sort of marketplace. Um, when we actually finally get into the meeting, um, if, it's, if it's myself on my own, I think there's a little element of surprise sometimes from the people, from the founders coming into a meeting. <coughs> Definitely, if it's myself and my husband in a meeting or another male colleague, um, the conversation and the eye contact tends to be directed uh, to the man in the room, um, which can be a little frustrating uh, for me, but as we get into the conversation, I have found ways to turn that around. I don't know what your experience has been. Um, I actually got thrown into the deep end, so I was recruited to you know, manage the family fund. And uh, we, we actually uh, recently started, you know, uh, so we have about eight deals now that are currently in the due diligence stage. And we've had uh, arguments with, you know, the founders over term sheets. Uh, literally had an argument yesterday. So, you know, the, the uh, argument is just fresh off the boat in my mind. And uh, there's a subtle difference, at least in the way we've communicated. I tried to keep my cool the entire conversation and the gentleman on the other end was just shouting. Uh, so the lead investor actually had to intervene and say, you know, you need to calm down because, you know, uh, you know, I on the other hand was just trying to maintain my cool. So obviously, you know, you all work for your, you work for your family fund. You work, uh, you know, with with your spouse. Uh, when deals are coming uh, to you, is there is are the deals coming through your network because? One of the common statistics studies that has, you know, has been done across the world that typically investors tend to invest in people whom they know, either directly or indirectly. It is through that network. And uh, one of the reasons why women entrepreneurs don't get as much funding is because of the fact that 90% uh, of the investors are male. So when it comes down to the two questions specifically, one, the deals that you get, are they led mainly by male founders and people whom you know? And what is your opinion about funding women entrepreneurs? Um, to answer your question about where we get our deals from, yes, we get our deals from referrals. So highest priority placed on a referral. If a co-investor suggests a deal, or if a founder of one of our current portfolio companies suggests a deal, we place that on highest priority. Um, so to give you an example, we run this informal network called the Young Funders Group, which is a closed door uh, you know, event where just a bunch of people getting together, speaking to each other about deals, the ecosystem. I'm the only woman in the room uh, out of you know, that 20 member team. Uh, so they keep bringing deals that they're interested in and we just have a general chat. Uh, so it is a very male-dominated uh, industry. Uh, to answer your second question about um, whether it's a male founder or a female founder, so in our current portfolio, we have uh, at least five, if not more, female co-founders. So there's, to give you examples, Baby Chakra's founder, Naya Saki, uh, Vista Room's co-founder, Ankita Sheth, Cloud Reno's co-founder, Tarusha Mittal, and uh, I'm right now put on the spot, so I'm forgetting a few, but there's at least six, if not more, uh, either founders or co-founders who are women entrepreneurs, Rina Nathani from Find Your Class. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, we, we look at the person and their ability to execute. Uh, whether you're X chromosome or Y chromosome does not matter. Excellent, that's great to know, because to, every time people talk about why women uh, entrepreneurs don't get funding, I would rather assume that's because the 
business plan is not strong enough, right? So it's, and I think it's also very, very important that we get more women investors out there because then, you know, at the end of the day, they're not, at least not being dismissed for being female. Um, in, in, your, in your case, you have looked at it dispassionately, looked at the business uh, uh, reasons why you would fund it and not worry about uh, what gender they are from. Uh, what has your experience been in terms of funding of uh, women entrepreneurs and the deals that have come? You've just uh, you know, asked me, said, can you send me some uh, deals which are not uh, the onesie, twosie, mom and mom store, right? Yeah, unfortunately, in our portfolio, um, and this has not been deliberate, we don't have any female founders. Um, and I think 99% of our deal flow does come through our network, and I would say 99% of it is male co-founders, not even a male senior, senior management team member or, uh, sorry, a female senior management team member or a female co-founder. Um, we're just not getting those deals, and I think that's just reflective of the startup environment and economy breaking barriers. I would say Tarusha Mittal from Cloudrino. So Cloudrino recently launched this Ethereum trading platform called ETHX.in. So any you know cryptocurrency enthusiasts, you can go check it out. She had you know developed that platform and there's actually uh, anywhere between seven lakhs to twenty two lakhs of currency of ether being traded on that platform daily. There's already 1,800 users signed up on that platform. They recently just launched it in August. You know, so, so here's a woman in tech, and that's just you know, an, an example that I wanted to highlight. So you, know, you just made a point that I'd like to give you, you know, enlighten you on about the deals and women entrepreneurs. So Sonda Connect was started about 18 months ago, primarily to focus on identifying a, is there a women entrepreneur ecosystem in the country? And B, what is the depth and quality of the founders? The good news is that within 18 months, uh, we have run three cohorts. For each cohort, we've got 100 uh, applicants, and we select 10. Uh, the first, from the first cohort, Series A funding, uh, with, you know, Manjuri from OncoSTEM has created a cancer diagnostic marker, which has a patent in 100 countries, over 100 countries. She had raised three million when she came to us. We helped to raise another seven million Series B through Sequoia. Uh, we, in, in this particular cohort, we have scientists who are looking at uh, sending 200 satellites up to space. We have someone who's created a DNA stain. We have virtual reality co-working spaces and um, uh, AI AI-driven uh, startups technology. Our focus is only to make sure that these women get a platform to meet with investors like yourself and other investors here in the room. So the good news is that India has a very, very vibrant female entrepreneur ecosystem. I think what's important is that we you know, give them platforms to be able to come and meet with uh, investors uh, like yourself. What's exciting for me is that we have role models like Latika, like some of the other uh, names that you mentioned earlier, um, and we need more female role models to encourage more women entrepreneurs to get into the ecosystem. Um, and you know, by speaking at some something like this, hopefully we are going to encourage more entrepreneurs and more people to more women to invest um, in female entrepreneurs as well. Thank you. Uh, one last question, so that we can you know let we I kind of hijacked the previous spot for us to speak uh, since I have a flight uh, to make. One last question. Everybody thinks that investors are making a ton of money, right? Oh my God, you know, Apova's got 55 companies in her portfolio. She must be worth billions. I really hope you are. But what is the reality behind it? Because frankly, for every, you know, when I have deeper conversations with, uh, you know, VC, you know, friends, it is that literally, you know, we, you have to be there for the long run. And, and very few deals are actually making money. We haven't seen any real IPO happening in this country. Exits are only through mergers and acquisitions. And, you know, when you're moving from, I think the ones who are in the pre-Series A seed round are making more money because at least they, the Series A investors, the Series B investors buy them out. So when you see, you know, Padmaja's numbers, the Indian Angel Network, if someone had invested, had got 32% out of it, what is the truth? behind this are you guys really making a ton of money okay so um, there's three parts 
to this question that I want to answer, and I'm going to take maybe three minutes or four minutes of your time. I hope that's okay. So, um, first part is startups is an asset class, right? So, look at the bond markets and the equity markets this year. They've outperformed themselves. The gold market is flat. The real estate market is down. Why would you want to put your money in startups as an asset class, which is illiquid, right? And I'm an angel investor, and I'm saying that. Uh, so we get this question frequently. So if you are engaged in, uh, you know, being part of a community where you're actively mentoring and seeing the growth of a company, you're willing to wait five years instead of, you know, making a quick two percent, three percent profit through intra trading on, you know, the, the National Stock Exchange or the Bombay Stock Exchange within a day. Then maybe you should focus your attention towards startup investing, but make sure it's only five percent of your portfolio. So that's part one. Part two, are we making money? Um, it, it's a balanced approach, right? So out of 55 startups, the reality is we were one of the first check writers in OYO, which we exited from uh, SoftBank bought us out. We had a 130x return on that investment. So for all the OYOs that we have, there's a fair share of write-offs and shutdowns. So the portfolio balances itself. Right now, we're sitting on top of eight markups that are valued anywhere between $5 million to $10 million, we're waiting for exits. So India as a market is an m and market. It's not a traditionally uh, IPO heavy market. So you may see a lot of consolidation or strategic buyouts, or you may see some acqui hires, but you know, IPOs is a little uh, difficult to see. Um, so I've forgotten the third point that I wanted to make, so I'm going to defer to Seema. Uh, have I made money? Uh, on paper, I think I've made money. <laughs> Uh, but yes, as, as the prover said, exits are, I mean, startup investing is a long game in India. Exits um, are, you know, five, if you're lucky, I think, five years. Um, and that's, what, that's the way I look at it, is that, you know, we invest in businesses that we see are going to grow, and there's a clear path to growth. Um, and we can support them and mentor them and help them achieve that. But it it's, has to be part of a balanced portfolio. So... I have other businesses on the side that I run to kind of pay the bills. Um, this is something that personally I do for fun and I love doing it. I love investing in startups and growing, growing with a startup, but I'm not expecting a return on day one um, or in year one. Um, and I wouldn't want to put that kind of pressure on um, the company that I've invested in as well. So it's very important to me to be a good investor and a helpful investor uh, and a supportive investor rather than a pushy um, investor. To your point about you know startups raising money at free Series A, so this is uh, data that Traction and Crunchbase actually provide. So uh, if you compare 2017 to 2016 and 2015, uh, in terms of angel investing, seed stage transactions have actually gone up uh, this year compared to 2016 and 2015. But if you look at pre Series A, Series A, B, C, D, E, we're performing very poorly compared to 2016 and 15. So what that basically means in English is uh, there's a lot of first checks being written, but pre-series A is that hurdle where most startups come to die. And you know, once you've crossed that pre-series A hurdle, raising the series A should be okay. But it's that critical juncture at pre-series A where a lot of startups are failing to raise money. Thank you. I was just smiling to myself because I wish I had a male uh, investor on the panel <laughs> and to see what, what his you know, response would be because when it, it, only a couple of drinks down will they say, "L, I'm not making any money, right? <laughs> Do you have any consulting gigs for me? So anyway, thank you very much, uh, Purva Seema. It's you. been a very interesting and we hope we get more women, you know, investors to get the uh, startup ecosystem more buoyant, as far, especially as far as, as women investors are concerned. Thank you so much, Latika, for making we know you have a flight to catch. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're still hoping. <laughs>